Good morning, you, and good morning, me. I am your highly refined and erudite host, John Henry. Let's get into today's morning, me. Yesterday, we did a whole meta thing about this newsletter. Today, we are going to start moving the morning me into being less about me and more about the work I do. With that in mind, let's take a look at some news. Uh, this story at WRAL in Raleigh, North Carolina today provides us with a nice look at how the media turns language to the advantage of those it serves. Check out this screenshot. And for those of you who are on the podcast, this is a screenshot of a headline at WRAL.com. And the headline reads, Man rushed to hospital after being hit by a Raleigh police vehicle on way to call. The lead reads, A man was hit by the driver of a Raleigh police vehicle on Gorman Street in Raleigh on Friday, etc. What I want you to see here, and, and be sure you read the accompanying article, it's, it's linked in the, the blog post here, uh, is how much effort went into avoiding the statement, a police officer struck a civilian with a police vehicle. That's what happened. The lead is ridiculous and goes so far out of the way to avoid speaking that core idea aloud that it ends up reading like somebody stole a cop car and then just stopped it and got out and hit somebody. Uh, and that's still a step up from the headline in the body of the story in which they repeatedly discuss how a vehicle was involved, hit by a police vehicle in the headline, and in the story you get this gem. The biggest shock for some locals was stepping out and finding a police car involved, which apparently somebody thinks police cars are autonomous. It just is running around hitting people all by itself. It's not until the next to the last sentence, 20 words from the end of the story, that you finally find out that there was an officer driving the vehicle. This headline and story are an absolute triumph of the passive voice. It reads like they could have, if they could have avoided mentioning that police were involved at all, they would have. Pedestrian hit by speeding vehicle. All personal responsibility of the driver is cast aside. A cop didn't hit someone while driving too fast. Someone went and got themselves hit by a police vehicle responding to a call. How dare that scoff law get in the way of our brave men and women in blue. It really is this abstruse and arcane. Uh, media producers really do go to this level of fine tooth Orwellian filtering to ensure the information they feed you advances their interests. And I'm telling you this as somebody whose education easily qualifies them to be the people who do this. It is not accidental. This piece was gone over to remove as completely as possible any reference to the police officer who was driving the truck. The purpose of this is to separate and diffuse reactions centering on that fact. The debates over when emergency responders should be breaking traffic laws, who the driver was and what their record looks like, the history of the department overall related to traffic safety of officers on duty and in response, to avoid energizing discussion that reflects negatively on police and authority in general. I guarantee the original copy was more direct before the editors at WRAL put hands on it, unless they were the original writers. The end result, you read this story about a police officer who probably was not doing their best work at the moment, striking and injuring a pedestrian, and you walk away thinking, boy, that guy got lucky. He should be more careful. The thought of what's the deal with that cop never crosses your mind. If anything, it gets shunted to a general internal grumbling about cops and how they drive, but nothing specific to focus energy on. So the energy dissipates and what could have led to protests and certainly should have led to some pointed questions and public engagement instead is a throwaway story that nobody bothers paying attention to. Words matter. And what matters most is that you pay attention to the words that are being used to tell you how and what to think. And that's about all the time we've got for a short morning newsletter podcast. It's Tuesday, so supporters and patrons, uh, patrons can look forward to a new JH After Party uh, newsletter in an hour or three. That's actually already out of uh, today's um, uh, patron-only uh, JH After Party is already out on the presses uh, and uh, distributed. The uh, last week's edition will drop at noon Eastern for uh, the general public. Uh, and that's it for Morning Me. This has been John Henry reminding you that all our work here is brought to you by you and your support is desperately needed. Swing by johnhenry.us slash money to find out how you can contribute, whether it's $5 or 5000 It's all desperately needed to keep me alive and this entire operation running. Thanks again. Don't forget the best support is spreading the word. So like, share, comment, tell your friends. When you want truly independent political activism and information, you start with John Henry. Thanks. Have a great day.